Okay. Um, just, I'm going to click on mute all and then can you click on unmute? Yeah, Henning, can you click on unmute? Yes. Yeah, okay. I'm back. Okay. Uh, welcome, everyone, to the 57th meeting of New Directions in Group Theory and Triangulate Categories. Today, our speaker is Henning Krauser from Bielefeld, and he'll be talking to us about central support for triangulate categories. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, it's very nice to be back. Uh, Rudra did, uh, sort of reminded me that I have been here <laughs> two years ago. Um, so as you see, I'm going to talk about central support for triangulated categories. And uh, at the bottom of this page, you find actually an archive reference. Uh, so that there's a paper on the archive with the same title where you can sort of find more details and uh, maybe you want to look sort of in parallel in case you get lost with my presentation. So my, my presentation is um, sort of somewhat hybrid. So I have prepared a few pages and then I go on and just uh, write on, on my tablet. Um, yeah, so here's actually an alternative title and this is somehow the theme of uh, this work is that geometry is algebra is geometry. And this is actually um, an adaptation of a um, lecture title, which uh, Ringe used some maybe 20 years ago. Um, he said algebra is geometry is algebra, but you will see that here we rather sort of do it differently. And the goal is, as you can see, so the goal for this uh, work is to treat triangulated categories uh, uh, as geometric objects. And this idea is, of course, not new at all. I mean, you know, there, there is a lot of support theory. I mean, you, you're certainly aware of the work of Paul Balmer uh, using sort of tensor structures, so tensor triangle geometry. And, uh, but the idea is sort of much older. It goes back to say Carlson with his uh, support varieties. And there has have been sort of various approaches in representation theory in particular to attach uh, a support to objects in a triangulated category. And part of my uh, goal is also sort of to unify these different uh, concepts. Yeah? And this is done by sort of introducing a center of uh, 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 letters of six subcategories. Okay. Um, so what else? Um, so yeah, why this title geometry is algebra is geometry. Yeah, if you think about triangulated categories, why have they been introduced? I mean, they have been introduced in in homotopy theory and in algebraic geometry to find somewhat an algebraic formulation of sort of cohomology series, basically. Yeah? So it's an algebraic uh, gadget, which um, captures sort of essential geometric or topological information. And now we go back. Yeah? So now we treat that algebraic object as a geometric object. Uh, and there is sort of the notion of commutativity, which is important and this is what I tried to explain. Okay, so here is my uh, setup. So T is um, always an essentially small triangulated category. Uh, later on, I make a, some further assumption, meaning that I introduce additional structure like a tensor structure or central action by some commutative ring, but for the moment it's general. And if we want to treat an, um, uh, sort of algebraic object in a sort of geometric way, we sort of study its cohomology series. And um, these are, this is a category of cohomological functors. You know? So cohomological functors, functor which sends exact triangles to exact sequences. And what I denote here by capital thick of T is the lattice of six subcategories. So uh, they are partially ordered by inclusion. 
and uh, we have uh, a meet and a join. Yeah? So the meet is clear, it's just the intersection, which is again a six subcategory. And the join is just obtained by taking basically the six subcategory generated by uh, say U and V. Yeah? So here's now the main definition. Yeah? So the main definition is the following. When, what does it mean that two um, six subcategories U and V are commuting? Yeah? So uh, you look at morphisms between them, uh, say in either direction, u to v or v to u. And then the requirement is that any um, morphism factors actually through an object in the intersection. Yeah? And that's a very um, elementary definition concept. Yeah, but it is nonetheless interesting as you will see. Yeah? So here's the first, um, Sort of consequence. So when when you have actually this uh, commutation, so if u and v are commuting, then we get uh, a nice Maya V Torre sequence. So that means we can sort of glue uh, such uh, six subcategories. And uh, the Maya V Torre sequence is here um, defined for a pair of objects. Yeah? So you look at the morphisms between objects, and then you pass to the corresponding quotient. So here you take the quotient, the Verdi quotient, modulo the intersection u of and v, so the um, the meet. Then uh, you have natural maps to uh, the quotient modulo u and modulo v, and uh, then you have uh, again a natural map. So this natural map to the quotient modulo the the union uh, or the, the join of u and v. Yeah. And then there's sort of a connecting morphism. And this is the existence of such a connecting morphism is basically equivalent to the fact that they are commuting. So a connecting morphism, which sort of turns everything into a long exact sequence. So such uh, Maya V torus sequences have been studied quite a bit for triangulated categories. I mean, I, I mean, it goes back say to Thomason, I guess he used it a lot. And also um, in work of Jeremy Rickard, you find this, or um, Balmer and Favi, um, there, there's quite a lot of use and uh, what is sort of essential you find in this definition here. Yeah? So that makes it work. Okay, so let me now give you another sort of explanation why we call this uh, commuting. Yeah, I mean, so far it's just a definition, so there's not really a good reason why it called why it is commuting. But there, there are actually functors which commute. So we basically attach to each thick subcategory um, localization and co-localization functors, and if they commute, then we have a pair for two different or six subcategories, and uh, we um, have that notion of commutativity as defined before. And uh, let, me, let me explain it. Maybe it's not so um, important, yeah? but if you have an exact functor between two uh, essentially small triangulated categories, then you get actually induced functors between the category of cohomological functors. Yeah? And um, one, so um, one of them is just given by restriction. This is sort of clear. And the other one is just the um, sort of left adjoint co-extension or whatever it's called. And a special uh, situation is the following. Um, if we have any triangulated category, then uh, we have the canonical inclusion and we have the canonical quotient. Yeah? And uh, both give sort of rise to uh, a pair of functors, which we can sort of compose. And then we get basically an endofunctor on the category of cohomological functors for T. Yeah, and these are sort of Bowes field, like Bowes field localization or co-localization functors. And the um, sort of result, which is um, actually what we, sort of well known uh, is the following. If you have a cohomological functor, 
then there is um, sort of a long exact sequence, uh, which, so you, because we have gamma, so the, the gamma is actually sort of the functor, which is uh, see, sort of co-localization and the L is the localization um, functor. And um, so we have the corresponding unit and co-unit and they fit. So these are uh, the unit and co-unit um, or co-unit and unit rather. And uh, they fit into a long exact sequence. Yeah? So uh, here the uh, sigma is my notation for the suspension um, and the suspension of the triangulated category of course into, in, in uses is suspension for the category of cohomological functors. Yeah. And um, now um, we can think of these categories of oops, cohomological functors on S and the category of cohomological functors of uh, the Verdier quotient as um, uh, six sub, full six subcategories. And they form a um, sort of home orthogonal pair. It's like a, tor uh, a torsion pair. Yeah. Um, like in sort of classical sort of Bowes field localization theory for triangulated categories. Uh, but here these categories are essentially small. So we don't have sort of enough room for constructing these Bowes field uh, localization functors for the triangulated category. Um, so that is actually here the remark. Yeah? So what I'm saying is that these are the analogs of Bowes field localization and co localization. And now um, comes the explanation I was promising you, uh, here this corollary um, says the following, namely uh, two subcategories U and V are commuting if and only if these um, co-localization functors are commuting. Yeah? So you can compose them in either direction and if you get the same by these canonical morphisms. So there are canonical morphisms from the intersection to this one and to this one. And if these are um, isomorphisms, then this is actually means they commute, right? And um, this is exactly the condition I was um, sort of using here as a definition. And I prefer somehow that definition because it's very elementary. Yeah, I mean, everybody who knows what a category is can sort of appreciate that um, concept. Yeah? So what it means that two subcategories commute, yeah, I mean, the um, morphisms have to um, factor through an object from the intersection. Okay, um, so this is good. And um, if you look at any sort of algebraic topology book, for example, I like the book of Tom Deek. Um, there are many other good books, but uh, the book of Tom Deek explains sort of very nicely the Maya Vitor sequence and points out that there's this notion of excision, which is sort of roughly equivalent. And uh, we have actually here also an excision sort of phenomenon, if we, namely, if we look at the gamma V and the L U intersected V and compared um, with this. Um, com composite of a co-localization and a localization, then um, this is an isomorphism. So that's, an that's basically the excision property which you have for topological spaces. And I should point out, and that was actually confusing me for, for some while when I was trying to work out details, there is this Noether isomorphism. Yeah? Oops. <laughs> so there is this Noether isomorphism here. Yeah? So you take, uh, um, the uh, quotient of V modulus intersection, and then you take the union of U and V, or the um, meet and quotient modulo U. And the second Noether isomorphism tells you that this is an isomorphism. I mean, for triangulated categories, this is not automatic. So this condition is actually equivalent, not equivalent, but it follows from the fact that you have factorization in one direction. Yeah? So if you have factorization of morphisms from U to V, then this automatically applies this, but also the factorization from V to U implies this. Yeah? So it's weaker, it's a weaker condition, perhaps these neutral isomorphisms. 
Anyway, um, now we have an obvious um, um, definition sort of following. If we have that notion of commut, I mean, like in, a, in, in any sort of group or whatever, uh, or a ring, when you uh, can define what it means that two elements commute, you can also define the center. Yeah? So the center of that lattice of six subcategory are all the um, six subcategories U, which commute with any other V. Yeah? Um, that's obvious definition. And um, we will see that this is actually quite um, interesting sort of sub lattice. Um, yeah, a priori, this is just a set. Uh, of course, we view it as a subset of our lattice. And I should say that there is not, as far as I know, there is not any sort of useful definition of a center of a lattice. Yeah? So here, <laughs> uh, I defi it defines a center of the lattice of six subcategories, but we use the fact that it is a lattice of six subcategories. It's not just any sort of random lattice. Yeah? Um, so if you look at any book on lattice theory, I don't think there's a good definition of a center. Um, so the rest of this talk is basically um, devoted to um, investigate the center. Yeah? So it is what we will see um, is that it is actually distributive lattice, uh, sub lattice, and even more, it is a spatial frame. Yeah? And now I guess I should remind you a little bit about some facts. Um, so let me get another page. So some reminder about frames in case you haven't seen this. Um, so we recall, so a little bit about, oops, about frames. So what is a frame? So um, a lattice is a frame if the lattice is, is commute, uh, complete, if uh, we have um, all joints, so basically set index joints exist. Um, and uh, so that means the lattice is complete and we have um, the infinite distributivity. So if we take an element X and take the join with um, some uh, big meat and this may be infinite, then this is the same as the uh, um, meat of the joints. And of course, this should be um, for all for all x and families of elements y i. So this is this is the definition of a frame. Yeah? And now there is actually a nice uh, correspondence between frames. So we look at the category of frames. And we look at the uh, category of topological spaces. Let's actually take the opposite category. And then we have two um, sort of nice functors. So to a frame, we can associate its um, space of points. And to a topological space, we can attach its um, lattice of open subsets. Yeah? So this is. Um, actually a fact that for any space, yeah, we take the um, sort of lattice of opens, open subsets, and this is a frame, yeah? And, but not every frame uh, um, is automatically uh, obtained as a lattice of open subsets. These are special, and to explain this, now we take the, um, for any frame, let's call F, we take its points, and these are uh, just uh, sort of the uh, space points. And points are nothing but, let's call it P, frame morphisms into the frame of 
consisting of two elements. So there's a topology defined on it. And um, then F is called, uh, it's called spatial. If actually the uh, corresponding sort of canonical map from F to um, omega of these points of F is uh, an isomorphism, yeah? lattice isomorphism. Uh, so in other words, F is actually uh, isomorphic to the lattice of open subsets for some space. Yeah? So then uh, it is uh, called spatial. And there's a, a very nice uh, result actually due to um, Zira Graz and Greg Stevenson, um, which they presented um, about half a year ago. Um, and here is sort of a theorem. So this goes is by uh, Graz, Zira Graz and Stevenson. And actually this is what inspired me to think about all this um, from last year. Um, so for T are equivalent, so for an essentially small triangulated category, the following are equivalent. So thick T, the lattice is distributive And equivalent is that it is then actually a frame and even a spatial frame. Yeah, thick T is a spatial frame. And of course, as soon as we have this space, we can define a, a notion of support. Um, and uh, then basically, um, so if, if this is true, yeah, if the lattice of thick subcategories is actually spatial frame, then there is a bijection yeah, between by a support basically um, between the thick subcategories and the open subsets of some space. Yeah? It is exactly sort of the philosophy which you probably have seen in uh, sort of the work of Paul Balmer on TT geometry. I mean, that was sort of the initial observation that for tensor ideals, actually he's just looking at the tensor ideals that they correspond to subsets of a space. Yeah. Okay. Um, what next? So now, um, now comes sort of the theorem, which basically you can guess now. Um, the center is actually a spatial frame. But I should warn you, the center can be trivial. Yeah, I mean, there's always the zero subcategory and the subcategory, the full subcategory T. They are centrals, definitely. Uh, but um, it can happen that, and and will happen. I give you examples uh, that uh, the center has no more elements. Yeah, even in interesting sort of examples. But this is not the end of the story. Yeah. So um, the first sort of observation theorem is uh, that this is a spatial frame. So one shows it is distributive. It is close under arbitrary unions uh, or joints, uh, I should say. And uh, then uh, then actually the argument which Graz and Stevenson are using, sort of fairly straightforward argument, shows you that you have enough points. So it's a spatial frame. Yeah. Um, and then we get sort of a notion of support notion of central support and obvious sort of consequence is that the sort of central sub thick subcategories correspond to open subsets of um, the space. Yeah? Okay. What next? I guess I should give you now examples. Examples. 
And maybe it's really good to show you um, a first small example. So we take um, for the pass algebra of this quiver, sort of the A2 quiver, uh, which is the same as sort of triangular matrices, upper, upper triangular matrices over field K. Yeah? So K field. Actually, it's also fun to do that with any commutative ring, but let's for the moment just take a field. Yeah? And then um, um, we take for T the category of perfect complexes. Yeah? perfect complexes, which is actually identifies with the bounded derived category of finite dimensional modules because the algebra is hereditary. And um, by the way, this has a tensor structure. It's sort of a tensor product, which you obtain just by uh, having, if you have two representation, you can tensor them in each vertex. Um, and that gives you a perfectly good uh, commutative tensor product. Uh, so it's a tensor triangulated category. Um, so let's see. Um, so sort of the lattice of six subcategory is very simple. Maybe you have done this calculation yourself before. So sort of standard example. There are three in decomposable modules and each of them sort of generates a six subcategory. <laughs> And those you get here um, sort of in the middle, yeah. And if you know a little bit about lattices, you know that this is a sort of minimal lattice, which is not distributive. Yeah? So that lattice is definitely not distributive. So the center cannot be everything. So it turns out that the um, center is just consisting, is trivial consisting of these two thick pub categories. Yeah. But actually, um, um, they, they, um, they all, all they sort of definitely not commutative, um, not commuting. Uh, so uh, uh, I, I will get back to this example later. Um, now let's look at um, a tensor triangle. So that was my first example. So my second example, and this is maybe what you really like to see, is a tensor triangle category. Uh -huh. Triangulated category. I don't assume from the beginning that the tensor product is commutative. Um, so it is actually true that if you have two tensor ideals, here's the proposition. Um, if, if T is rigid, uh, then any pair of thick tensor ideals commutes. Yeah, this is nice. So we have we have uh, commutativity for tensor ideals. Yeah. And um, this is even true if the um, uh, tensor product is not commutative, there's sort of a very nice elementary fairly sort of elementary argument, which I learned from Kant Bashaf. Um, anyway, um, this sort of gives hope that sort of when we go to sort of um, thick um, tensor ideals that we, that we have some sort of commutativity. And of course, I mean, you learn from, from that, that for example, you have these, um, um, my V torus sequences, which uh, I mentioned before. Yeah, I mean, that's the consequence. So now I give you uh, another example of um, uh, sort of central subcategories, namely, if you uh, have a central action on 
on uh, a central action on T from a commutative, graded commutative, oops, from a graded commutative ring R. So we assume that means, um, so this means if we take graded morphisms between a pair of objects, which is just the direct sum of the morphism from X to its suspension, then this is a, a graded R module for each pair of objects. Um, so, There is actually um, for each prime, so let spec R is now the set of homogeneous, homogeneous prime ideals. Everything is homogeneous here because, yeah, so the ring R is graded. And uh, for, for prime, if we take a prime ideal P, then there is a corresponding localization functor. The localized subcategory, as a loc not the, the localized quotient, is obtained by locking, just localizing, keeping the objects and localizing the morphism uh, sets. The, the modules can be localized at the prime P, and this gives a, sort of a nice localization functor. And uh, I denote the localized object um, XP. Uh, and if we have now um, sort of for, for an ideal, for an ideal, finally generated ideal, uh, we look at the set of primes, sort of the variety which is defined by that ideal, all the primes which are contained in A, um, this gives us uh, a thick subcategory, basically the thick subcategory of objects supported at T, uh, at, at, at this uh, sort of closed set, Zariski closed set. So these are all the primes, uh, all the objects, so that X localized at P vanishes for a prime P, which is not contained in the closed set. Yeah. So this is, uh, so there's sort of a lemma. Lemma says, actually we need a new page. So the lemma says that this is actually central. So this is a central six subcategory. And now uh, let me recall that a subset B is um, promising. We actually need to work with the, um, the uh, Huxter dual topology. So a subset is Thomason, it's called Thomason. As you know, if B is actually the union of um, all the Tsarisky closed subsets contained in B. Yeah. And they form the open sets from the opens of the Hoxter dual, which are denoted by spec sort of check. The Hoxted will space of the Sariski uh, uh, um, spectrum spec R. Okay, and now um, we actually see that sort of we get a lattice or a morphism. If we take sort of a Thomason set, 
and assign to it the corresponding um, the subcategory, which is the join of all the T B A, all the uh, the join of all the central six subcategories obtained from uh, closed subsets contained in B. Um, so this is now actually in the center. So uh, this is uh, this gives the frame morphism. So what we see is actually that the support which one sort of defines basically via the central ring action uh, produces um, central subcategories. Yeah. Um, sort of this is nice. And um, yeah, actually, may maybe I should sort of proceed with some more examples. Um, actually, I should should have told you um, before, if we look back at the tensor ideals, um, here, um, for the category of perfect complexes, we have a tensor product, but it's not rigid. It's not rigid, and it turns out that the tensor ideals uh, do not commute. Yeah, so um, maybe I should add this here in blue. So not rigid. So um, T is not rigid. Uh, so tensor ideals do not commute. So what I'm saying is that this assumption on rigidity was somehow needed here. Um, and you see definitely, I mean, this algebra is definitely sort of non-commutative. Um, and you see also that we don't get this commutativity for the six subcategories for various good reasons in a sense. Yeah. Okay, um, I wanted to mention also um, stable module categories. So it seems interesting if we take a sort of G, a finite group, group sort of, um, KG, uh, the group algebra, then we know um, sort of from work of Benson, Karls, and Rickard that we have a nice classification of uh, sig tensor ideals for the stable module category. So we take T, stable module category. Um, so then from the work of Benson, Karls, and Rickard, we know that the center of T contains all um, tensor ideals, right? Because, uh, I mean, there, there's a notion of support via the action of the cohomology ring. And, um, and from that proposition, which you have just seen here before, that proposition basically tells you that uh, the tensor ideals, they sort of correspond to uh, the six subcategories defined by sort of specialization closed subsets. And these are exactly the Thomason sets when the um, um, ring is an Ethereum. Uh, then um, we see that all um, tensor ideals are central. But I have no idea how in general the center looks like. And I have I mean, Dave Benson was very kind and gave me sort of some sort of weird examples showing that a lot can happen. <laughs> yeah, uh, so we don't know uh, what is sort of central and what is not. 
uh, in general, um, I mean, for example, just to give you one example, I mean, the six subcategory generated by the, um, so the six subcategory, oops, uh, let me denote it by six. Of course, if the, um, if the group is um, a P group, then all, ten, uh, all six subcategories are uh, tensor ideals and everything is central. Yeah? But in general, this will not happen. And then we can just look at the six subcategory uh, generated by the trivial representation. Sometimes it uh, may be central, maybe central or not. Yeah? So um, you've, in, in this uh, uh, paper, which I mentioned uh, on the archive, you find explicit examples, which Dave Benson provided. Yeah? So it's not clear what the center looks like. Um, so maybe I should try to come to an end and um, see, um, or maybe one more example, uh, sort of maybe disappointing uh, if you take for T, the bounded derived category of coherent sheaves on P1, yeah, um, then, um, then uh, the center, the center of T is trivial. On the other hand, uh, if for um, a tensor triangulated category, and this is maybe um, good and sort of the positive news, uh, generated uh, by, by, actually my, uh, I should be more careful here. I, did not mean the center of T, but rather the center of the six sub letters of six subcategories. Okay, so if this is generated as a triangulated category by the tensor identity, for instance, the category of perfect complexes, or um, let's say the um, stable homotopy category, then the center, everything is central, which is good, yeah? And that, of course, sort of recovers what the Balmer spectrum basically, yeah? Because then uh, all six subcategories are tensor ideals and um, sort of you can think of the Balmer spectrum as that sort of space which you obtain from uh, the central subcategories. Okay, so let me, oops. Uh, what happened? I don't know. Um, so let me now move on to um, sort of a final result, sort of a relative view, relative perspective. I mean, it's somewhat disappointing, yeah, that the center uh, often is trivial, but this is not, as I said, it is not the end of the story. Yeah? So we fix, um, a sub lattice, a sub lattice closed under um, arbitrary uh, joints. So we fix such a sub lattice and then we define the obvious definition of the center of T. So for example, T could be the sub lattice of all tensor ideals. Yeah? Um, of thick tensor ideas. So we define the center in the obvious way, all the uh, elements in T so that uh, 
u and v commute for all v in t. Yeah. And then again, we have the theorem that uh, t, the center of t is um, uh, a distributive sublattice, and it is actually a frame, is a spatial frame. Yeah. So it is a spatial frame. So we get again a sort of a space attached to it. Um, and uh, so example, yeah, so we could take for T the um, sublattice of thick tensor ideals. Yeah, and then if T is rigid, Oops. If T is rigid, then the center, oops, the center of T, I should say, sorry. Hmm. Then the center of T equals T. So, um, so basically we recover the Balmer spectrum in that way, yeah? or rather the Hoxter dual of the Balmer spectrum, I should say. Yeah? Um, so basically that sort of gives sort of a space. I mean, also there, there is sort of that recent work by, um, let me, uh, by Den Nakano and, uh, Yakimov, Vashav, I think there were three authors, right? Nakano, Vashav, and Yakimov. Um, they do also the sort of TT geometry for non commutative tensor products and basically define sort of the analog of a Balmer spectrum, and we recover this as well. Yeah? Uh, so this would be just, so that space would be just the space, the points. points of the center of T. Yeah? So that's sort of the analog of the Balmer spectrum. Analog of Balmer spectrum. Okay. Um, so the other sort of space one should look at is really the one uh, coming from um, 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 central ring actions. Yeah. So maybe we call T thick uh, Homological if um, U is of the form T of V for some uh, V for some Thomason set for some ring which is acting. And um, so that gives us also a space. All the cohomological ones, all the cohomological uh, thick subcategories are actually central. And that sort of defines a space, which maybe one should call cohomological space. Yeah. And um, it seems actually uh, to be an interesting question. Um, so the question. Question When are all um, central subcategories 
for Monochico. Yeah, so this is not uh, clear to me. And um, actually for, let's say the, um, yeah, I mean, there, there are, I, I suspect, for example, if you take this uh, stable homotopy category of finite spectra, that not all uh, six subcategories, um, all six subcategories are central because they're <laughs> tensor ideals, um, but I suspect they're not all cohomological, but I don't have an argument for that. And maybe I should rather close now with that question and uh, I'm happy to answer your question. Thank you. Thank you, Henning. Can we all unmute ourselves and give the speaker a round of applause? Uh, okay. Do you have any questions? I see Milan Yakimov has a question. Yeah, very impressive results. I, I had two questions. So that result that you said about a pair of ideals in the rigid uh, <clears throat> setting commuting with each other, that was about two-sided ideals or one-sided ideals? Are... Two-sided two okay, what, ideals. What happens if you try to commute, say, a left and right-sided ideal? Anything interesting happening there? Maybe. Uh, I have not really uh, investigated that. Uh, I don't know. Hmm? And, and one more question at the beginning, you had this elementary formulation where you said that maps from U to V should factor through the to the yeah. join. So yeah. if, you, if you impose that in just one direction, what do you get from that condition? Um, yeah, I guess this is not really good enough. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that was my comment on the Noether isomorphism. Right, but that follows from it, right? From just from one it. side. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not good enough um, to get really the theory work. Um, I mean, uh, to get a sort of a spatial whatever, mm -hmm. lattice or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mark. Any other questions? So I have a small question, but I'm gonna wait, wait to see if, because I can like ask mm -hmm. you this question later. Up to you. <laughs> okay, so my question was, well, first a comment. Um, so when you were dealing with DBP1, uh, I think I told you this briefly before, uh, it reminded me of this paper by Hiroki Matsui, where he um, under sufficiently nice conditions on the scheme, um, computes with a kind of a support theory, um, the spectrum with prime thick subcategories of D of the singularity category, uh, D S G X, and mm -hmm. X is non Noetherian separated quasi affine and yeah. locally, uh, yeah, locally hypersurface. Like mm -hmm. there are various ways in which these conditions become important. Um, mm -hmm. So, have you thought about singularity categories as possible candidates for your central support? No, not really. And I should, I mean, you're absolutely right. I should, I mean, of course, it's the stable module category of a finite group is also a singularity category. <laughs> yeah, so, mm -hmm. I mean, there are some good results um, in that case, but there are also questions. And uh, I mean, I, 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 you're absolutely right. One should really look at the, uh, uh, at the singularity categories. In particular, in general, I mean, there is not a sort of reasonable tensor product on it. Yeah, okay. singularity category, yeah. Uh, and then it would be interesting to see what are the central subcategories, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's sort of, yeah. I mean, the central subcategories are sort of the nice ones, yeah. I mean, this was actually, uh, I should actually uh, uh, praise again the work of Greg Stevenson and Sira Graz, yeah. I mean, they, they were sort of noticing that distributivity is sort of essential to get a space, yeah. But I, I think it's not good enough to have a space, yeah. Um, there are sort of distributive lattices, for instance, my um, sort of small example, this A2 quiver, 
yeah um you have a distributive lattice yeah if you remove one of the the, the non-tensor ideals they form a distributive lattice but it's not a nice lattice in the sense that i mean it's not um they're not central so you don't have this my torus property yeah. what what they were asking is actually I mean, Greg Stevenson and Sierra Graz, they were asking for sort of nice distributive sublattices. And what I'm claiming is that the commutativity is sort of the nice property one should yeah. sort of pose. And then there's sort of nice geometry. Yeah? Yeah. And for the singularity category, I, I completely agree. I mean, that would be very interesting. And, and yeah. yeah, like just a small comment to my, uh, like a small addendum to my comment. Uh, Matsui looks at a support theory, actually. And he looks at the Dirac bounded category of uh, coherent sheaves and the singularity category of like nice enough schemes. It will yeah. be nice, interesting to check how yeah. closely or not so closely his support yeah. compares against this. Yeah, thank you. No, I, I, you're, you're right. <coughs> mm -hmm. Take that as my homework. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Can I ask one question? So usually, this distributivity lattice usually associated with notion of this casual algebras, right? Is there some way kind of casual duality in this in this picture? Um, uh, well, I I mean casual duality. Are you thinking about now a category of um, sort of perfect complexes, or what? What do you have in mind? Yeah, 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 uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, and you're saying in that case, there is some distributivity for the lattice of six subcategories? Oh. Uh, I mean, I'm not familiar. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure, but, but, but what I'm saying is that usually, I mean, one of the uh, equivalent conditions for casual algebras, right, that uh, huh. this uh, uh, lattice of subspaces, right, should be uh, should be distributive lattice, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Like no, just, that yeah. that is somewhat new to me, uh, okay. and uh, this is a very nice comment. I, I I have not made that connection with Kozul. The Kozul. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so what are you saying? I mean, which space? So so you, you, you so so for 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 algebra to be Kozul, right? You have to look at this space of, like, let's say, V tensor with uh, relation um, subspace, and then again ah. the, the degree, ah. and then when you look at this. Uh, uh, lattice, right? The set generated by this lattice, right? It, okay. it becomes a distributive yeah. lattice. Ah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so that that would be nice to make that comparison. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you for Kurt. Any more questions? Okay. All right. I don't seem to see any more questions either in the chat or in the, uh, yeah. Well, but okay, in that case, uh, let's thank the speaker once again. Um, we don't have a talk next week and the week after that, we will have Francesca Pudele from, as you know, Leeds, from Leeds uh, speaking here. Okay, thank you all. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Annie. Just wait a minute.